Hello there. Welcome to another visual how-to session. And this one here is all going to be about how to programmatically start creating search queries and execute these using the search object model of the Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. My name is Patrick Dissingham, and I work for a company called U2U, which is a, a company based in Brussels, Belgium. Now, before we dive into the code, let me first illustrate you how information workers are actually constructing a search query and executing that within a collaboration portal like you see here in the browser. Clicking on the Search tab brings us to the Search Center, where I can, as a user, enter my query using the simple keyword syntax. So, for example, I can enter the keyword Search, hit the button, and we will have a number of search results that are retrieved by the SharePoint search service. You can refine your search results by adding more keywords and, for example, also use minus and plus for excluding or including specifically some, some uh, search results matching certain keywords. As an example, I'm going to exclude all of the entries in the search results that are not coming out of document libraries or are not documents. So I'm going to use the, the filter here, is document uh, zero. So when I hit the button again, I only will get items that are coming out of document libraries or actually documents themselves. And I can even refine it further by, for example, explicitly asking that the search results also contain the keyword office. So now we only get kind of a number of PowerPoint presentations and some Word documents. Besides using the keyword syntax, you also have another way of constructing your search query. Let me go to the Search Center and click the Advanced Search to end up in the Advanced Search page. Here in the Search Center, you have more options for creating your search query. You can filter on keywords, you can kind of use exact phrase, any of these words, those types of options. You can uh, narrow your search results using languages and based on a certain result type. And you can also use the managed properties that the administrators have exposed here in the property picker. All of these gives you more powerful ways of creating your search queries. And behind the scenes, the search query is actually formulated as a full text SQL query string and then provide it to the search engine for execution. So as an example, let me illustrate this by entering an exact phrase. So we want to have all of the search results that contain business data catalog. And I only want to have presentations and maybe only are going for presentations that are authored by WIM. So when I hit the search button, I get only to see the search results that match this complex query. So two languages that we can use, we can use the keyword syntax language, and we can use the SQL, the full text SQL query language to construct our query and then give it to the search engine for execution. Now let's see how you can programmatically do this. So I have here a slide with kind of a summary of the different steps that we're going to take. So to start, you will have a, a client application, which can be a Windows application, a console application, a web application, or possibly also a web part that is running within the context of SharePoint. It is important to understand that for this how-to, we will work directly with the object model. So we need to be able to grab the context of the shared service provider. But once we are able to do that, we can formulate the query using the keyword syntax or the SQL syntax language, and then submit the query to one of the new classes that we have within the query object model. So the instance created from these classes will execute the query and will give us back a result table, an iData reader, that is populated with the search results. And we have different types of search results so we can have search results that kind of match the best bets, or the ones that we will um, use are the ones that are 
relevant so the search results that the user saw previously in the collaboration portal and using these results we can actually populate one or more controls within the client application the execution of the query itself is done by instantiating from one of the two new classes that are available within the search query object model. So the query provider class that we had in the previous version of SharePoint Portal Server 2003 is still there for backward compatibility, but actually has been deprecated. So you should use these new classes. They both inherit from the query base class and both the full text SQL query and the keyword query class are provided by the Microsoft of Office .server .search .dll and are living in the namespace Microsoft Office .server .search .query. The first example is going to be the one that illustrates how you can programmatically execute a query formulated using the keyword syntax. So I have here a small Windows application that has uh, a reference to the Microsoft.Office.Server and also to the Microsoft.Office.Server.Search.DLL. And we also have the need for the Microsoft.SharePoint.DLL as one of the helper assemblies for executing our code. The application is quite simple. It accepts the keyword syntax and then it's going to display the results in a data grid. So if we look at the code over here, we can see kind of the flow that you have to follow to create a query and then execute it using the keyword syntax class. Very important to start with is that you have a line of code that is going to grab the reference to the context of the shared service provider. And you do this by making use of the server context class, calling the get context method, providing it with the name of the shared service provider. This is one of the possible options. Once you have this context information, you can provide it as a parameter of the constructor of the keyword query class and get your instance. After that, you are going to initialize the instance. There are a number of properties that you can set. For example, the result types can be set to relevant results, indicating that you're particularly interested in the search results that are displayed in the search core results web part that you have seen in the browser. Enable stemming, trim duplicates are other properties that you can set. Um, the SDK documents a couple of others that are possible candidates for initialization. But a very important one is the query text. So the query text is populated with the keyword syntax formulated query. Next, you're going to call the execute methods at the level of the instance to actually send the query to the search service, and you get an instance of the result table collection back. That one can be processed. You can, for example, filter out the results that you want and kind of process that using ADO.NET display it, bind it to the user interface controls that you have within your application. So to summarize, there are five steps in order for this query to be executed and the results to be displayed. So first step is get your context. Second step is get your instance of the keyword query. Prepare the instance for execution. Execute the query. And next, process the results. And as you will see in the, in the next example when we illustrate how we can programmatically query using the SQL syntax, it's going to be exactly the same number of steps and the same type of steps you're going to take. So let's run the application and see the result of our work. So we have a Windows application with a text box inviting us to type keywords. Let's do that and then execute the search query. The search results are displayed here in the data grid and then, just like in the browser, you can use the minus, the plus, you, you can use the properties to fine-tune your uh, search results. For example, I'm going to exclude all of the search results that contain the keyword pages. The second example of how to programmatically execute a search query 
is one that allows users to enter a department and then find all of the employees that are actually working for that department. It's an example of a query that is formulated using the SQL query syntax language and also an example of how to do a people search. So what I can do here is type department called sales and then execute the query and I get all of the different people working for the department together with their picture and I also include some presence information so that we can immediately make use of all of the actions in the context menu. So another example is if I type in SharePoint Geeks as the name of the department and I click the button, then I will get Mike Fitzmaurice as the employee working for that department with a nice picture of him. So here's the meat of the web part where I have the code that will be executed when we click on the button. So we have first the formulation of the query and we are using a select statement here with different fields that we want to retrieve. We're using a from scope and we use the scope people so that we only get people information and then we have condition the department that was filled in by the user in the text box. After that you are seeing here that I'm retrieving the context of the shared service provider in a different way. I actually make use of the context that my web part is running in and I'm using that as the parameter for the creation of the instance of the full text SQL query clause. So this is a different approach for providing the context. It will be automatically retrieved from the SP site type of uh, reference. But then we have uh, the preparation of the query, which is basically the same as in the previous example. And we have the execution. And we get again a result table collection instance. And that one we can process. So the processing is nothing more than building up an, an HTML table so that we can display the pictures, the name of the user or employee, and the email yeah, that um, is associated with it. So if you compile this code into a .NET assembly and deploy it in the proper way and make the necessary registrations, people will be able to use your web art on the different pages within the SharePoint environment. So this concludes this how-to session where I demonstrated in two examples how to programmatically create a search query and execute it by the two new classes that are available in the search object model. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.